we'll never understand Pete, but this will definitely like help. <laughs> Speaking of the star of the show, who's bringing that energy today? Marcus it's Pete, and he's got a movie. He's doing a good job. Getting ready for his career, working at a car wash. Why don't we have to clean this thing anyway? It's just gonna get fire on it. When you see someone like Pete, you know there's a lot going on but you really don't know what it is. I think that people are interested in his struggle. They want to know, how are you doing? You know, what, what happened to you? The King of Staten Island is an opportunity for Pete to tell you about himself and to tell you about his feelings and his journey. What is that date? Uh, that's uh, the date my dad died. Oh my God. Pete is from Staten Island. His father was a fireman who lost his life on 9-11. And it was really so hard for him to recover and I would even say it's just been recently that he's finding his way and being okay. I think he's very fortunate that Amy is his mother because she's behind him all the way. God, it takes a lot of energy to keep up with him and he's been true to mill. Your dark sense of humor doesn't work for me. I find it funny. One of the first conversations we had was how autobiographical should the King of Staten Island be? And we decided that it could be completely fictional, but it's an imagining of what Pete's life would have been if he didn't find comedy and he dreams of being a tattoo artist. But what are you gonna do? Are you gonna get a job or are you gonna leave the house? I'm gonna open that tattoo restaurant. No, like for real. It's never been done before. I looked it up. The movie is like my love letter to my mom and trying to end that part of my life. I feel like maybe we got to a place where we could finally let go a little bit. I think this movie has stirred up a lot of emotions for him though, like both good and bad, but I think it'll be therapeutic. This movie is about things that are very real to Pete and there are a lot of real uh, participants involved with John Sarantino, who worked with Pete's dad, and Derek Gaines, Coulson. Ricky is Pete's best friend, uh, his other best friend Dave wrote the movie with us. I really wanted all uh, the people in it to crush more than anything. We got to put them in a place where they could hit home runs and they all did. It's just so cool to watch this story finally come alive and watch Pete take something that's so vulnerable. I think a lot of people don't understand Pete and this is a nice little like look into his life. Something's really cool about someone like Edmund Admitting to themselves all the faults and all the realities of like how they got to where they're at. I'm even curious to just like get to know someone I feel like I know so well more by watching this movie. Did you happen to get a chance to take a look at the? Uh... I mean, I drew like that too when I was 14. You know, it's a really beautiful thing to share something that's this hard with other people. It's it's a real gift. And I'm sure like loads of young people are going to relate to this. Someone who's scared to take a leap to like do anything with their life, who's hindered by mental health and has trauma. And I just think it's really amazing that he's kind of laying that all out to bear. I'm just hoping you enjoy the movie and that you could relate to it in a certain way. I just feel like everybody's always disappointed in me. You're one of the few people who treat me, you know, like a person. You're welcome. Hopefully it's all been a really positive, life-changing type of experience for him. Hey guys, have fun out there, all right? <laughs> That's what we do, we make movies. I like your tattoos. What are those numbers on your arm? Oh, that's uh, the date my dad died. He was a fireman. Died in a fire 17 years ago. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Don't be, it's fine. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not your dad. Ah! <laughs> you can't focus on Scott anymore, honey. He's 24 years old, Marjorie. Let that fucking bird fly, please. Don't worry, Mom. I know your daughter got smart and went to college and abandoned us. But I'm still here. I'm gonna be here forever. Yeah. People told me slow my road. I wanna become a real tattoo artist. Your work is mad and consistent. Obama ain't right. Oh, I love your tattoos. This is my favorite. <laughs> I've been dating someone for a little while now. The first guy you date in 17 years is a fireman just like that? You don't think that's weird? You're gonna have to pull your weight a little more around here. Maybe help Ray get his kids to school. Kelly, do you know him? He's a new friend. You okay? You know, you could tell me. I'm okay. Oh, I trained her in the car. She's not gonna break. Do you ever think about putting on the jacket? Why would you even ask me that? What's wrong with being a fireman? It's fine if you don't have kids, because you don't know if you're gonna come home or not, and then your kids are fucked up. You make everyone around you feel crazy. People are normal, then they hang out with you, and then they're fucking Jack Nicholson in The Shining or something. I gotta tell my mom you tried to drown me. To the above ground pool, you're like fucking eight feet tall. Now let me tell you something, your dad was a hero. And heroes are necessary. 
and they should be allowed to have families. You gotta get your shit together. Time is passing by very quickly. Why do you think I smoke weed all the time? So I can slow it down. I feel like everybody's always disappointed in me and I never live up to anybody's expectations. Hey, thanks for listening to all this. You're one of the few people who treat me, you know, like a person. You're welcome.